Hello, everyone, and welcome to the podcast. This is Jill. Have you ever wondered how parts of your brain actually filter out the entire world so that you can focus on what's most important? And how does that affect your goals and your life? That's what we'll talk about today. We make ourselves miserable or we make ourselves strong. The amount of work is the same. Carlos Castaneda. We're going to start off the year with a part of our brainstem. It is called the reticular activating system, RAS. Oof, that's a mouthful. The RAS system starts at the spinal cord, is about two inches long, and is about the width of a pencil. That's where all the senses come in to a single point. It then directs into the emotional centers of the brain and are processed there. But that the RAS system works on a subconscious level. Have you ever had this situation where you're either driving a car, this happens to me when I'm riding my bike, is you look at this really bad pothole in the road. On a bike, that's devastating. And you're staring at it because the whole point of it is that you're trying to avoid to fall into it. Yet, inevitably, you drive or ride your bike right into the hole and nearly fall off. Why is it that the thing you're focusing on so hard to avoid is the thing that you actually hit? And part of that has to do with this reticular activating system. What happens in our brain, and this is in the brain stem, which means it's the most central core part of the survival of humanity. It's how we know to fight, to flee, to eat, to drink, is this bundle of nerves that's there to basically filter out what's important. Any moment, we are taking in millions of pieces of information. They're flooding in from our eyes, from our ears, from the sensations around us, our touch. We are just overwhelmed with all this information. This bundle of nerves, its job is to determine what's really important. The floor is red. Is that important? Well, it might be if it's on fire. If it's just a red carpet, nice to know, but not that important. And it's also the number one reason why you start focusing on something or you start thinking about something. Maybe you've decided you're going to buy a very specific kind of car, and then suddenly you just start seeing that car everywhere you go. Oh my gosh, everyone owns this car. It must be really trendy. It's not true. The only thing that's really trendy is your brain saying, hmm, this is important to Jill. I'm going to start focusing on every time I see this particular thing. And you'll start noticing it more and more. And so really, this whole system is there to do two things. To protect us in case something is important that we must notice it. There is a giant tiger chasing us. There is a car on the street. There's a giant pothole on the road. We have to pay attention to something because it's about to potentially cause us harm. On the other side of it, it also boosters things that it thinks that we want to pay attention to, like the car we think we want to buy. But it also wants to make sure not get overwhelmed by all the data that's coming in. And I've noticed this in all sorts of different ways. For example, I listen to sleepcasts from Headspace. And sometimes it'll say, now think about how your shoulders and back feel. And suddenly I'm like, huh, my shoulder and backs actually feel kind of stressed out and a little bit sore. How did that happen? That I never noticed all day long that my shoulders were sore until something told me to specifically pay attention to them. You will also hear people will talk about when they break up with a boyfriend or a girlfriend, they'll say, I just see their face everywhere. Everywhere I look, I think it's them from behind, on the side. And that's the RAS highlighting this person because your brain is like, oh, obviously this is very important to Jill right now. I should focus on it. Kind of annoying. That's what it's doing. It's probably also why some people feel like they are unlucky or they're lucky. If you start thinking, man, I'm just unlucky, all the things that fit into that narrative will suddenly come to light. I had someone in my life tell me how unfortunate she was. And yet, when you look at her life and the things that have gone on, she actually was very fortunate. A lot of things happened her way. And anything that she worried was not going to go her way ended up not happening. But for whatever reason, all she can remember are the bad things. Are the things that she thought were going to go wrong, even though they didn't go wrong. But to her, 
this RAS system was gathering all the negativity because it thought that that's what was important to her. This isn't some sort of a best friend algorithm that's trying to figure out what it is you should see. This is just something that says, this is important. I'll pull this type of data out so that she can see it. There are some dysfunctions when it comes to the RAS system, and it may be something like attention deficit, where someone is paying attention to too many things. That's me. I pay attention to way too many things. Look, there's this, there's that. Oh, squirrel. I can see all the things all the time. That could be considered a disorder of it. Even sometimes when you think about sleep disorders may also be the fact that the brain is not filtering down in the way it should to allow you to sleep. In terms of traumatic disorders, PTSD, other type of attention problems, may be the RAS system faltering in some kind of way. They even think of epilepsy as a syndrome connected to RAS activity because what happens is, is the signals start to degrade and as they do, the seizures come on. Interesting. Something you probably didn't even know can actually cause major effects in your life. One person brought up this point that you can tell how it works a little bit when you drive home from work. You're barely paying attention. You know the roads, you know which way to go, you know the speed limit, you know almost everything that you're going to encounter when you're driving. So RAS is cutting out a lot of information from you because you know this. You already have it down, no need to worry. But if you were to be picked up and dropped into Paris without knowing French and suddenly be put in a car and you had to drive someplace, your brain would suddenly be paying attention to everything. What does that sign say? Where does this road go? Am I going the right way? Am I even driving properly for the rules of France? Suddenly your brain goes into overdrive because you're in a brand new situation. Despite the same activity happening, your brain is filtering it quite differently. And how it goes when it comes towards our goals is the fact that it will always show us the thing that, again, it thinks we think is important. So the problem is that when we're trying to do something like quit a thing, people who try to quit smoking, people who try to go on a diet, people who try to quit alcohol, they're constantly focusing in on that thing. They're thinking about food. Man, when am I going to be able to eat next? I'm really hungry. This diet is killing me. Or when can they smoke or drink next? Because they're constantly focusing on that thing. And RES is saying, well, obviously drinking is very important. I'm going to keep reminding this person about drinking all the time. It's not trying to defeat you. It just doesn't understand that your focus on it is bad for you and it shouldn't be happening. But it's happening because, again, RAS focuses on what we think is important. And so the problem is, is if we're constantly focusing in on the thing we're trying to quit, it will keep trying to defeat us. Likewise, if we have bad messages about ourselves, I'm a loser. I'll never get what I want. I'll never get the goals that I want. I don't have the skills that I need. I'm really unlucky. RAS will keep focusing those messages so that you actually prove to yourself all those things are true. I think it was interesting for me as being a chubby kid, I never really felt like a chubby kid. I always felt fine. I always felt, I'm just me. This is the shape I come in. And then I had family members really get involved in my life, constantly reminding me, how overweight I actually was and how I shouldn't be wearing shorts and I shouldn't be trying out in sports and I shouldn't be trying this and I shouldn't be doing that. And at some point, this took a stake in me and my attitude about myself changed, even though my weight pretty much stayed the same. That RAS system was refocusing my inputs into a negative way, which was bad for me. And it suddenly made me feel worse about myself. So the RAS system can also validate things that you think about yourself, remind you of certain ways that you act or things that you're good at or things that you're not good at, and then try to reinforce that same method. So this article that's in the show notes talks a little bit about what can you do to break out of what RAS decided to filter for you. You have to realize that in the end, it's telling you what you think is important. In those goals that you're trying to achieve, all you can do is start refocusing in the things that you're actually really good at and start getting your brain to notice when you're good at those things and have it 
stop reminding you of the things you wanted to shut up about. And that all happens with you taking the first step. So you have to be aware of what you want, what the goal looks like, how you hope it will impact your life, and how you think it's going to be wonderful once you get it. And start noticing those things. I think the first time I started doing this is when I started working out with weights. And I got really impressed with how much weight I could lift that I couldn't do before. Or when I did a particular exercise, how I could do it longer than I did it before. And I started replacing in my brain, wow, I'm really overweight and out of shape with, wow, I lifted that thing I couldn't lift three weeks ago. I'm getting stronger. And suddenly I started noticing more and more things around me when I did something that required strength. And that started reinforcing more weightlifting activity because look at how much progress I made. Now I can even make more progress. Or even when it came time for this other podcast I was thinking about, I didn't really have any good ideas for it. I didn't know what I was really going to talk about. And I started just immersing myself in this topic. What would be successful if this really worked out well? And I started thinking about it day and night and just drowning myself in thoughts about this. And suddenly all these story ideas started coming out of my head. All these thoughts about it started coming out of my head. And it became real to me. And not only that, then I would drive places and say, wow, that would make a really good thing for my podcast. And suddenly the ideas just started springing up. So by defining what success is for you and what would make you better at those things is going to help you to focus RAS on the things that you really want to do. We see that a lot of times when it comes to entrepreneurs or artists where they're seeing opportunities everywhere. They look over in this corner and they say, oh, that would make a great business. James Altucher, who has a podcast and a number of books, to him, everything is a book or everything is a podcast. Oh, that'd make a great podcast. Someone should write a book about that. Someone should do that. That's a great business. And the reason he does that is because that's where his brain is focused RAS is going nuts with him on showing him new opportunities every time. He's not a lucky guy. He's a guy who is focused on anything that would be successful in his life or in someone else's life. He is a success magnet because he focuses on that item. When it comes to photography, you always see people who really look through the camera lens and they can tell what would make a great photograph. They're always looking for that next good shot, that wonderful picture, and they're seeing it through the camera eye because the RAS system is showing them that through the camera eye. By defining what would be successful to you and re-imaging RAS so that you can keep focusing on what would be successful, you're training your system to point out all those opportunities so that you can become good at it and then your brain could keep reinforcing it for you. Then he says that it's important that we strengthen our RAS system, which means that we must focus on those things that go in line with what we're trying to think about. Again, when I was trying to think about this other podcast story, as soon as something came up that seemed like it would make a good topic, I pointed it out. Oh, that would be good. Yeah, that'd be good too. So it's reinforcing that system by you actively thinking about the thing, reinforcing when you see it, and acknowledging it every time it happens. Those ties will get strengthened and your brain will start to get the idea. That's what's important to you. Let's point it out every time we see it. The University of Minnesota Extension says that one important aspect about changing the RAS system is to use the right wording. The important thing is that you don't use words like hope. I hope I lose weight. I wish it would be easier for me to quit drinking. I wish I could start my new business in the next year. Or even the word I want. I want a new car. I want a new job. It's not good enough because the brain itself doesn't look at that as an action. Instead, they suggest that you use the word intend. I intend to lose weight. I intend to get a new job. That is an action word which requires behavior modification on your part, which is exactly what the RAS is looking for when determining what it should focus on. Who your friends are, that's a big part of reinforcement as well. 
if you're trying to get out of this mindset that you have deemed yourself a loser or someone who's unlucky, and yet your friends keep saying, oh, that Bob, Bob's unlucky. Look how unlucky Bob is. Because it will hear that message that Bob is unlucky. And Bob himself will start thinking, wow, I really am unlucky. So first of all, don't hang around people who strengthen the RAS messages you're getting that you don't want to have. Then make sure that you're hanging around people who strengthen the RAS message you do want to have. Social networks are a big part of this. He says, essentially, it's like building an algorithm. Think about that. If I shop for camping things on Amazon, what shows up more on my Amazon page all the time? More camping gear. How many tents does it think I need? But if I bought a tent, it's going to show me 20 more tents. And that's a little bit how the RAS system works. So the more times you're shopping in your brain for this thing that you want it to show you, that's how you train it to show you more of it. And he says it's something that we can't just do at the beginning. We have to keep doing it. We have to keep focusing on those things. It reminds me of when I heard about people in sports, how they tell them to visualize things like making baskets. Just sit there at night, right before you're going to bed, and imagine you're standing there shooting free throws over and over again, and you're making them every time. Because if you can tie that RAS system to your motor actions, you will get good at doing something you're not actually doing, you're just imagining doing. And so in a way, you're training your RAS system through conscious thought, through actual thinking about something, and that's where you're really trying to force your RAS to start telling you the messages that you want to hear. This article also mentions at this point that visualization is important. And in episode 48 of this podcast, we talked a little bit about how to use the senses to better strengthen your brain, whether it comes to the sense of smell, hearing, or vision. All these systems that are there will help you create those RAS connections if you can do them. So when it talks about visualization, talks about making the smells right, when it talks about making the touch or the sounds correct, all of that will help connect the RAS system to actual actions so you'll start seeing it all the time. What you want to do, besides the visualizations, is you want to make this feel as accurate as possible as you can for you. Make it deep. Make that idea of whatever it is you're trying to get very real in your life. So I'm trying to do this other podcast. I imagined what this looked like. I imagined what the place would look like. I imagined what the people would be like. I started just visualizing it all over and over again trying to build this world in my head. And I started living, breathing, dreaming this whole thing because I taught my RAS system to understand that it was important that I think about this. The last step is you want to make sure that you set goals so that you can actually start working your way towards those things. If you actually start doing the things that are a part of what you're trying to accomplish, now that you've visualized it, you felt it, you heard it, you smelled it, those actions will reinforce the RAS system even more. In a TED Talk by Blaine Okers, he gave a system what he called the YWTAYBA system. What it stands for is what you think about, you bring about, which is essentially this RAS system. And he talks about it that if you plant the things that you're looking to do, you'll actually grow those things. He puts it into a whole gardening analogy that if you plant something, that's what you get and that you need to be the gardener of the mind. He says that there's three types of gardeners, those who just get what they get by circumstance. Oh, look at that. I got a new job opportunity. Then there's a second level where there are people who set goals, make plans, and they actually decide most times about what they're going to plant. And most times they get exactly what it is they were going for because they were trying to do that. I kind of think of myself when I was listening to him, that's the bucket I'm in. I do a lot of things where I'll make plans, I'll make goals. And for the most part, anytime I set my mind to something, I get it. But he said the third level is that they do this with everything every day. 
They're constantly thinking about their goals. They're constantly making them rich in their brain. They set plans to make their goals. And this is a daily persistent activity. And they always plant what they're going to get. And I think that that's something that's worth achieving when we're thinking about our RES system. Can we actually work so hard on the mental game of what we want that we get our brain to help us with it, to show it to us every time we see it, to reward us and pat us on the back every time we do it? We really want our brain and the RAS system to reinforce our goals. So my challenge to you is try to see if you can program one thing into your RAS. Try to target something that's particularly visual, particularly active, something that you intend to do and say, I intend to do this thing or I intend to buy this thing and start infiltrating your brain with imagery, success, visualization and see how many times then you notice that thing from there on out. And now our fun entertainment quote of the week comes from Interstellar. We count these moments as our proudest achievements. Having fired the imagination of a generation. But we lost all that. Pulls into port for the last time. Or perhaps we've just forgotten that we are still pioneers. That we've barely begun, and that our greatest accomplishments cannot be behind us, because our destiny lies above us. We always have to make sure that we feel that our greatest accomplishments are in our future. That'll help us keep moving forward and always improving in whatever we're trying to do. All right, everyone, thanks so much. I hope you have a great week, a great start to your year. And if there's anything you want to say to me, let me know. And you can reach me at jill at smallstepspod.com or visit my website. You'll find all the subscribe buttons there, all the different ways you can watch and listen to the podcast.